Lemon Amiga Prison. A Playtime Video Review. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hey there, welcome to another Lemon Amiga Play Guide and Review. This time it gives me great pleasure to introduce Power Drome, published by Electronic Arts in 1989, available for $24.95. This review goes out to Johnny Smuiso, who is a titanium backer, and although I didn't choose any games for me to play this year, I'm going to dedicate this one to him. the title sequence to roll you'll get some appalling music and also this demo artifact showing you the track. And back in the day I remember seeing screenshots and adverts for this in Zap magazine and this really 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 made me want to buy an Amiga. So this is a prerequisite to all of the other 3D flight games that we got so let's check it out. And so First thing we need to do is enter our name, and then it gives us my favourite blank switches. So let's just label them up so we can see what we're doing, and then you can see we can choose circuit results, start a new championship, practice race or tune up, and also change between mouse and joystick control, and also the two player options. Right at the start of the game it's important to tune up your vehicle and it's also important to enter the power drone. This is power drone 24 and that's my entry into the power drone. Dan, you can see there's four other competitors and I'll have to beat all those competitors in the championship. Now that we've started that we can now move to the tune up options and again blank controls everywhere. As you can see from these labels, we can change the flaps between small, medium, large, the stabilizer, and also the pitch and roll bias. The more pitch you have, the less roll you have, the more roll, the less pitch. And we can also change our fuel selection as well from the ones available, and also the filters, which we shall see later on. We need particular filters on different race tracks, and you'll have to make sure that oxygen is selected for the first one, which is the practice one. And you can see lap selection can also choose, but at this stage, I think we can only choose 20 laps at a minimum. Once we are OK with all those control options and sensitivity options, we can now go back to the game and we can either practice that practice circuit or we can choose to race it. And for this one, let's choose to race the practice circuit and to see how far we can get with it. So once we click on that option, that will then light up and take us on to the game itself where we will end up into the pits and the pits is an option that I'll be returning to a bit later on from here you can also repair your vehicle and by pressing a number of keys you can replace body parts on our vehicle the wings as well as the thrusters at the back and the nose cone as well so we get all the time in the world in the pits to fix our vehicle before we start our practice run and I think pressing the space bar will move us off the screen and onto the game itself which is a very simple oval pattern on the very first track, the only track that we can actually select. At the very start of the game, there are a number of controls that we need to be aware of. The first one is the centering field, and as you change the centering field, if you turn that up to 9, which is on at the moment, you can see it moving very, very slowly, and the centering field will put us directly in the middle of that track, and we can no longer crash into the walls. With the strength all the way down to 2, we can crash into the walls, and we can speed up, and it's a bit of an idiot mode, so if you turn the centre and field all the way up, then you shouldn't be able to crash in this game. You can see the centre and field is X and C, and we can also switch that off as well. We can 
take 10 hits on any of our body parts before they disintegrate and it looks like our wings have taken 10 hits already and what can we do? Well you can see it alters our flight control so that we can hardly fly this thing and we'll also enter the pits as well to fix our craft. Unfortunately, if our centering field is on maximum like it is at the moment, we can no longer enter the pits because it will centre us automatically, so we can't do that. But if we imagine that we have entered the pits and we have got a broken up vehicle, you can see in the robo pits, we can replace the engines, we can replace the wings, and we'll also need to replace that nose cone as well. So you can see once we are happy we can press the space bar and we can also open the tune up screen from here by pressing the O key and that means that we can also tweak our controls as well because many players said the controls of this game were hideous and you couldn't play it. I'm playing this with the mouse and yes it is possible if you use a low mouse DPI and some small wing options to get some nice fluid controls out of this game. The screen will flash blue if we collide with anything and you can see I had to turn on the centering field pretty high to stop us colliding with things at the start of the game. The first thing we need to do is to press the E key to start those engines and if you don't you'll just thud to the floor without anything moving whatsoever. And you can also hold down one of the mouse buttons to instigate turbo and if you instigate too much turbo then the thrusters that you can see at the bottom of the screen will go red and there will be a beeping sound when we are flying too quickly and everything starts to overheat. So heat is a problem in this game and as long as you can keep that heat down and that's great. You can see our flight speed is marked in red and we also have a rear view mirror as well. practice circuit it's important to fly in the middle of it and boost as much as you can on the straight parts and as you can see I'm damaged unfortunately and that means that I'll be unable to continue and yes there is even a rescue vehicle that you can call by pressing I think it's the B key and that will pick us up and rescue that but once we've completed the practice mission and the practice circuit then we can choose all these other circuits this is round two Track 1, Antracorp, location Terra, atmosphere is oxygen, so we can keep our oxygen filters, but you can see by moving through those tracks they'll all have different atmospheres, so we'll have to keep an eye on that if we want to get through the game. So let's select our first track, it's track 1, it's oxygen filter, so let's just make sure that we've got the oxygen filter, it's only 5 laps and let's select economy fuel for this because that means it burns a lot slower even though we don't get the high speed with the economy fuel it means we don't have to call into the pits and fuel in so let's select the race for this and i think our vehicle is automatically repaired to the top every time so let's exit the pits again and every time we start we'll go on a practice lap in order to qualify so qualify in any of the positions if we don't complete this then we'll end up at the back and i think you have to complete maybe two or three laps in practice mode like this without any of the traffic in order to qualify and having qualified then we'll move on to the race itself Part of the learning process in this game is getting used to those controls and many players said that they couldn't control this game, something that I can agree with, and messing around with those options, the magazine reviews said that the Amiga version is much better than the ST version, which was of course the original, and that's because the, all those control sensitivity options are there on that tune-up menu. And with Modern Mice there is actually a DPI button on there which you can press and perhaps a low DPI for this particular game because don't forget this was created to use the ball mouse 
so you really need low DPI and there are a lot of settings that you can go through this is barely controllable for me as you can see with these particular settings but with that centering field on we can just about stick to the middle of that circuit without being bumped into the sides and that means that it's like roller coasting all the way through it and just like a roller coaster you'll have to get used to that thrill ride and get used to being very sensitive on that mouse as well and again if you change the pitch angle to a small pitch angle it means we can't rise up and down so quickly but that will increase our roll speed as well on our second lap at the moment and I think it comes up at the bottom when we manage to qualify and we can also press a key as well to end the qualifying and that will throw us straight onto that race. Part of the race it told us that there's a snowstorm approaching and there are random weather effects in this game that's why it's a masterpiece and if you don't have the right filters you'll be struggling because you need the rain filters if the weather starts to descend and that means that you need to call into the pits and get those otherwise you'll be a sitting duck and sometimes the screen will light out like this during a snowstorm and that tells us that we're in a snowstorm and the controls are going crazy as well so I will be unable to get very far in this particular game you can see warning filter malfunction on the bottom and that means we should have called into the pits we should have got those filters and that's not particularly easy sometimes when it can start to rain or snow halfway around the lap it means you have to be pretty darn handy to get into those pits and remember to switch off that centering field otherwise you won't be able to get anywhere even though at this stage we are dead in the water we can still produce our rescue vehicle you can see one of our wings is damaged and both of our engines as well and calling the rescue vehicle takes ages but that will eventually take us on to the pits let's just quit that race because we didn't get anywhere and it will give us a lowly position for not managing to complete that previous race I'm not quite sure what we're doing at the moment I think we're moving on to maybe the same track again to try that again As you can see in Power Drum, you'll have to press a number of keys and have tight controls over the controller, the mouse or the joystick in order to get anywhere and this does really come with a warning that you'll have to be slow. If you have fast reflexes like me then you'll dive up and down and crash everywhere but if you are very smooth with the controls and you have the center of field down to maybe four or five and you are very careful with the boost as well and then that should mean that we can fly around at normal speed and it means that we can avoid getting damaged and if we can avoid the weather as well which of course is completely random and car number two car number four they're all entering the pits at the moment and the other players can enter the pits which means that we are able to get in front and they can damage each other as well forcing them into the pits and I think we can crash them out as well even though we'll get our own damage if we try to do that let's just speed up that footage you can see there are nine laps left and we are already lapping other people our ET in the middle is the time that we've taken on this particular lap and LT is the fastest lap that we've managed to accumulate so far that's a 59 seconds around this track 
and that's another lap completed that's a 54.9 so you can go for faster slaps in this game as well as championship points and it's pretty fun going for the fastest lap although again if you crash too much into the side like I have done I'm trying to get into the pits but I've forgotten yet again to turn off that centering field and yes there is a key to reset us in the middle of that track if we want to do that and that means that just like F1 GP that we saw we can simply reset ourselves right back into the action Power Drone was released by Electronic Arts, which was of course an American publishing company. This was designed and coded by Michael Powell, an American in America, so this is an American NTSC game. That's why we're playing it on NTSC at the moment, and I'm using an O30 processor to take away any of the slowdowns when people complained that it was simply too slow to play this on an Amiga 500. So this is the NTSC experience that you can see played on on all 30 and as you can see once we crash out we'll have to reset the centering field all over again and the centering field will knock itself off if you crash so you'll have to be aware of that warning right wing is damaged so there is only four laps to go on this particular race but it looks like I've already written it off because of my antics and unless I manage to get into the pits, which I can tell you now I won't, then this is another write-off race. So I hope you can do better than I can at this particular game. switch off that centering field and try to get into that pits again and what will happen is you'll fly into the pits and I think there is a key press to land at a certain spot or maybe you just have to stay there and it will automatically go in so that's us colliding into the pits just like Star Glider 2 we can fly down the tunnel get repaired you can see there's fuel piling in there as well automatically and you can see that we are pretty much done damaged at the moment and I'm simply waiting around waiting to press the space bar for us to leave this area and continue with that race Continuing with the race, it looks like I didn't manage to get into the pits and it looks like I managed to cut that footage together from another try. So yes, it looks like that we're actually continuing on this very first track with the broken wing. And just like a flappy bird with a broken wing, we're going to be struggling to get through those last three laps. taken too much damage then our instrument panel will start to break and at that point the only thing that we can do is escape or we'll press the escape control key to move on to the next one and the, the atmosphere is methane so let's make sure that the methane filters are selected five laps that's all we need to complete in order to complete this race so let's select the race let's check out the next track and you can see we're fully repaired and fully fueled up so we should just be able to press space and get straight on with the practice and on this methane covered environment you can see the atmosphere is pretty green of this game Michael Powell went on to Wonderland for Magnetic Scrolls in 1991 and Subway 2050 listed on that Lemon database but as you can see Wipeout was very much inspired by this game and you can also see there are traps as well sometimes the sides of the track will 
come together and nip into a point, and if we are at that point, we'll get crushed. So there are crushes on these levels, and things that you might not expect, jumps and things like that, and bridges, which were also copied in Wipeout. So this is a big drop, we'll have to jump over that gap as quickly as possible, and if we drop through that hole, that will simply slow us down. There won't be a ship that picks us up and takes us over the bridge like Wipeout, but that will slow down the vehicle, which we will definitely need to make sure that we don't do once we're doing the final race. So that's a crash out, I've qualified in second. And the most important thing to do is to start the engine as quickly as possible, that will give us the heads up over the rest of those guys, and if we're not tripping over them then that means that we don't usually incur too much damage from the start. Just like Indy 500, there are real-time damage mechanics in this game, and just like Descent and things like that, things will get blown up and things will get littered all over the track, and you'll see debris flying off at all angles. So let's go through that crusher once again, Beverly Crusher, and let's keep on going, hopefully through the tunnel, and out to the other side where we can instigate a bit of turbo, which gives us some kind of lead. And I think there's also a button that we can press to give us our lap times and maybe the lap distances as well. And we can definitely check out our lap position. We're on position level one at the moment, hopefully in front of all those other racers. Just speed up that footage over the next laps, and even though five laps is only a small number, it will still take us quite some time to get through this. And if we're not careful, even with the centering field on five, we can still hit the side. That will take the centering field off, so we'll have to put it back on again. And if we dive into the ground or hit the ceiling of the tunnel, that will do the same thing again. So the idiot mode, the centre and field, is the most important thing in this game and as long as that's on a pretty high number, you shouldn't have any problems. You can see that we can get more or less to the centre of that track by turning that on and keeping that on and having those computerised automatic centering controls means that we can begin to enjoy this game. It's the final lap of the methane world and we've completed it in position one. At the end we'll get some kind of a podium or whatever it is our reading will be number one it says on our ship and then yet again it will take us to the race selection screens where we can then select another race. Your entry has been accepted, I'm not sure if that resets us on the track, no idea, but you can see, yes, if we choose to start another championship, that means we'll have to go through the qualifying and go through the races all over again. So let's not do that, let's skip on to some more footage, let's move on to track three, you can see it's an ammonia world, so the first thing we'll need to do is to set up the ammonia filters so that we can actually fly it, and I like the economy spec fuel all of the time, and that means that we won't run out and we can burn through all those laps without having to pit because as you can see pitting is a nightmare at the best of times. The first time I've ever played this track and the first time I've ever seen it, you can see that we go through a very dark tunnel as well, halfway through it, and that's because it's a special level and all these levels have something special on them. With this one it's a dark tunnel, and you can see I'm flooring at an angle at the moment because it's crazy and I can hardly control the ship. So rather than slow down and try to centre the ship, I'm actually persevering, trying to make some headway 
and unless we centre it's going to be a difficult time and you can see that we're leaning over to one side that sometimes helps us get through some of the areas and it's not really very helpful in the tunnel. see lap zero at the bottom of the screen and lap time is zero LT zero so qualifying position grid it looks like we're in third position at the moment having qualified now we're on to the second lap that means that we can end the qualifying session and get on to that race See, there's another crusher in this tunnel and this time it's a horizontal crusher instead of a vertical one so we'll have to make sure to get through that in case it damages us and take it very slowly and easily smoothly as possible through that tunnel section and of course once we're out into the open we can then floor it or at least attempt to to try to keep in front definitely see the wipeout heritage in this game this was definitely ahead of its time and some people say that this is actually the father of the wipeout genre I'm not actually sure about that but this thing came out in 1989 that's before doom that's before wolfenstein and there weren't that many 3d games available in 1989 and there are a fair few on the amiga and I think Formula 1 Grand Prix came out in 1991 I think so this was definitely ahead of its time and this was shown in quite a few shop windows as well to sell Amigas like it was in shop windows to sell PlayStation 1s and there was an update of this game Powerdrome which was played on PlayStation 2 at some point and I've definitely played that game and it's very much like a wipeout game even though it's called Powerdrome so they did use the license a bit later on to try to capitalize on the Powerdrome name but unfortunately there were only two games in the series this being the first one and many people who had an Amiga 500 complained that it was simply too hard to control it and too slow too jerky and not that much fun drone can be playable if you have the right setup and it's all about the controls and it's all about memorizing that centering field and if it switches off or if we get engine failure like that with one lap to go in this race yes one lap to go what can we do with engine failure with one lap to go well if both engines disappear on us and break out look at that shuttle is being called the emergency shuttle if both engines fail then all we can do crash to the floor and call the emergency shuttle and that again will take ages and ages to get to us and it will eventually show up and take us into the pits and that's basically written off our chances to complete this level with one lap to go that's quite disappointing but i was trying to rush through this play in order for this review we can even choose an external view as well and still the shuttle hasn't turned up and lead time has started i'm pressing keys wildly on the keyboard and race is over it means that that guy got number one number three got number one in this case not us and that means that we quit the race and that means we'll get no points for doing that 
and we'll get to move on to the next one in the championship. So it is fair, it doesn't limit us if we fail to qualify or if we fail to complete the race. So what, we get to move on to the next one. And so let's practice again the next circuit. And I forgot to check if it had the right atmosphere. Let's have a look. Track 5, Sulphur. Is that the one that we're going for? Um, track 4 is actually an oxygen track. So it looks like that we're right after all. Let's click on practice because again it's the first time I've seen this track and played it and it's an oxygen one so hopefully it's not going to start to rain and clog up our filters again. Most racing games, it's the art of memorising the track, or the sequence in this case, so that we can go full speed against our competitors, and we'll need to know all of the tracks and memorise them if we want to complete any of these courses and get a fast time. Having done that, we'll have to choose race, and that means we'll have to practice all over again on that same track and circuit might be a better description because this thing is definitely a loop even though it moves around like spaghetti best of times due to playing this on a slow powered machine and not having any idea of the controls many of the people on lemon amiga said this game isn't that much and it's only a 6 out of 10 game because if this was even controllable it would be a good game and many players didn't even get off the first practice circuit and that's why the score for Lemon Amiga is a lowly 64% which means it's average. Because of the heritage of this game and what it tried to do and so many years before the PlayStation 1 came out in 1995 and Wipeout was even a barely imaginable thing on the drawing board at that stage. So because of its heritage I think this definitely deserves a higher score and let's move through those scores whilst you watch me trying to complete the 10 laps of this circuit. Low score went to Lemon Amiga at 64%, Dato Magazine gave this 70%, The One gave this game 70%, Sea Omega gave Power Drone 77%, Your Amiga gave it 79%, CMVG awarded this 80%, Amiga User International gave this a high rating at 90%, Paradrome got an incredible 91% by Amiga Computing. Amiga Format gave this an incredible 92%. Ace Magazine gave the Amiga version 92%. And Zap Magazine, which was also reviewing Amiga games in 1989, Zap awarded this 93% and a Sizzler Award. And Math Evans commented that this was head and shoulders better than the Atari ST version because of the control options which have been added and it seems to be a lot better all of the rough edges of the ST version have been shaved off and maybe they were playing this in 1989 on an expanded Amiga which had a bit of horsepower so maybe they gave it a great rating but Zap 64 definitely the magazine where I saw all of the adverts for this game and they gave it a massive high score as well and I also remember seeing adverts for Hover Sprint that we've reviewed already Hover Sprint is another one of these games only it's a street based hover game rather than this kind of tunnel simulator 
the hover sprint definitely gave me something to imagine and captured my imagination back in the day so I always wanted to play these games and it's only now this year that I've actually managed to control this enough to be able to review it because before this date I couldn't control the game I couldn't play it it was very frustrating and I couldn't review it Those scores combined means this game, Power Drone by Electronic Arts, got an average score of 8 out of 10. And I definitely, definitely think this deserves at least a 7 because of its coding prowess and its heritage and what it tried to do. The atmosphere effects, the weather effects, the storms, all of the things, the repair mechanics, damage modelling and all of the things they tried to do so definitely a 7 maybe even an 8 out of 10 for me depending on if you have a DPI mouse which is actually playable the joystick control seems unplayable at the best of times so for me you can only play it with the mouse and so the control options definitely make or break this game if you can play it with the controller then it's playable and it's fun and it's impressive if you can't then it's very annoying and it only gets a low score number of tracks in the game maybe five six seven tracks and you can see that they do get harder as it goes on so you can see that I'm having to put the strength of the center of field on nine at that point just to try to get us through that tunnel entrance in one piece taking a look at Warhead as well at some point in this series and that's yet another 3D game where we have to move around at high speed and blow things up so Warhead is another one of those 3D ahead of its time games and that's another one which I always wanted to review and I'm only just competent enough to play it now in 2021 that is a long time after these games were actually released and as I say, playing this back in the day, I found it very frustrating, to say the least. It's also impressive that our dashboard contains all these readouts and the stick in the middle moves around like Wing Commander and Wing Commander is yet another one of those 3D games that we got on the Amiga and you can see crashing into the back of a player also gives us some damage. give you some idea of its futuristic nature this game also had if you can believe it a null modem link up option where you could link up two machines together and play this game two players I've never actually seen that I've never actually played it it's not on Amiga Live but this game is amazing and this game came out ahead of all those two player link up options and all those other games and of course two player games the link up option became standard in the 90s not that many players had heard of it back in 1989 that's another failed attempt by me that's another botch so let's move on to track six this looks like it's an oval let's make sure that the filters are all right put us down to five laps and oxygen yes this will be the final track that i'm going to look at the final circuit of my play of this game because this is as far as I've got with it.
it looks like I'm taking it really easy trying to learn this track. It's not that much difficult than the first practice one. You can see it loops around in the open air and then dips inside halfway around into a tunnel. So it's not too bad unless you bang your head on that tunnel. So what are your thoughts on Power Drone? Did you play this back in the day? Do you remember those magazine adverts which made this look extremely futuristic? And did you get to play this? Can you play this? Is it even possible for you to play this game? It's definitely divided in many people's opinions. This game just falls short of being an absolute masterpiece and maybe on the PC with textured walls and things like that it really would have been but this game was definitely definitely one of those games which pushed the bounds of what was even possible and when standard platformers dominated the 8-bit and the 16-bit era and Atari ST ports this was basically the best Atari ST port perhaps that the Amiga ever got because it improved on the original at every turn and as long as you have a fast CPU then the frame rates are nice and smooth as well and even though this is more like a simulator just like Indy 500 once you've mastered it it's quite fun I played this game you can see we have two laps remaining and everybody's falling over each other and crashing into each other which is very fun to see and this reminds me of a Star Wars game this was absolutely years and years before pod racer of course and pod racing became even a word so this was a pioneer and a frontier and I have great respect for this game and at least a lot more than I did for it back in the day and at least a lot more than many of the comments that I've read on Lemon Amiga. So thanks once again for viewing this guide and I hope after this it gives you some tips on how to play it and uh, enjoy this game for yourself. Thank you very much.